good. Fantastic. It looks like uh, Sarah's. Fabulous. So then, without further ado, I think we'll hand over now to Julia, uh, who will talk us through post traumatic stress in Australian midwives. Julia, can you, uh, are you live now? You might need to switch your microphone to live by clicking the, the button at the top of your screen. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to um, this uh, session of the Virtual International Day of the Midwife. I am very happy to be able to present the findings from my PhD work, which was conducted or finished uh, last year. As you see, this was done in Australia, so I'm talking about post-traumatic stress, or my research was done post-traumatic stress in Australian midwives. Um, I'm now, I now um, just, it says Germany on my name, so I'm now, I moved to Germany meanwhile, so that's why there's the two countries. Okay, so, um, why, why is this, um, why, why have I, why is it important to look at post-traumatic stress or why in midwives and why have I decided to dedicate um, my time and energy to that? Uh, I, we see a lot of traumatic birth experience in women. It's like depending where you look between um, 15 and 40 percent roughly of women uh, say they have experienced their birth as traumatic, as a traumatic event. And we also have now research that is showing us um, that uh, midwives can experience post-traumatic stress. So that's been done in the UK and in America and my research in Australia. However, so these two, two things that are just standing. We have a lot of traumatic birth. Women experience this as traumatic. Midwives experience as traumatic too. So what I felt was missing from this puzzle too was to work out, okay, what, what are risk factors? Because we do not have really a lot of information about which factors make it more or less likely for midwives to experience um, that sort of distress of experiencing uh, themselves traumatic stress when being witness to a traumatic birth event in their role as midwives. Okay, so sorry. So that's that's the background. That's why why this topic um, is is was of interest to me. And um, in regards to our role as midwives, where we are to um, promote normal labor and birth. I also see that um, post-traumatic stress does have the potential to affect the quality of midwives' work. And that makes it even more important to find out about factors that make it more or less likely for midwives to suffer from post-traumatic stress. In particular, we've seen that um, post-traumatic stress can increase how midwives perceive risk during their practice, um, during their uh, giving care to women in labor and birth. And this is, of course, very, very central to our um, to midwifery practice, because if we as midwives see more risk, then um, we may also we we may we are certainly acting differently, and in the end, this may result then in an increase in obstetric interventions, which then increase the likelihood of causing trauma to women. So it's like a big circle. It's always it's about midwives and women and how what happens during birth um, actually really connects midwives and women and how. Yeah, how we really also in in this topic of traumatic stress, um, it's kind of mirrored that midwives and women are connected. So we, we share all this lovely um, experience, uh, transforming experience of birth, but we also share birth trauma and we are affected. And 
Yeah, so so this was something that very much fascinated me too, how midwives and women are really both in that big, big topic of traumatic birth. So, okay, so if midwives are stressed, we know, um, then, yeah, they can, they perceive things different. If they have had traumatic experiences that gave them traumatic stress, they are more likely traumatic stress does something like um, it makes you see the world more different, more, more negative. So, um, like, if you have experienced a trauma and you have not dealt with, with it and you have persistent uh, symptoms of post-traumatic stress, which is um, when, and these symptoms, they, they then um, give you a more sinister view of the world. And for midwives, that means a more sinister view of the normal birth process and a more an exaggerated estimate of um, risk in birth. So we, that has been observed not only in midwives, that has, also, that has been observed in other health professionals too, this connection between um, symptoms of post-traumatic stress and increased perception um, of risk. Okay. So um, to the methods for my research, I, I did an online survey and I invited um, midwives who were holding registration in Australia and the Australian College of Midwives <coughs> um, agreed kindly to um, support my research and they uh, distributed um, email invitations to, to members and invited them to participate in the survey. Um, so when we talk about post-traumatic stress, it is of course important to be very precise. What do we mean with it and um, how are we measuring it? I decided to use the post-traumatic stress, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder symptom scale self-report version, the PSSSR. And um, I also had to, you know, decide on a cutoff point um, from where we say, okay, these people now have um, have what we call um, probable PTSD. So just to explain the term probable PTSD, it sounds a bit funny, but it's just because we have self-report, um, and with self-report, by um, definition, you cannot ever set a diagnosis. So you. Um, always can only say it's like probable PTSD. To really give a diagnosis of PTSD, you would have to do a one-to-one -one interview. So when you do a survey or something, you use these self-report measures and as a result, you get um, the likelihood of probable PTSD. So the PTSD symptoms are um, intrusion, avoidance and arousal. So just to illustrate it with intrusion is that you know, you have reoccurring re thoughts. Um, also, we can also say re-experiencing that these memories of a traumatic event come back to you and if in situations where you don't really want them, so you have no control really over that. Um, connected to this then is also that you have avoidance, can have avoidance symptom, symptoms. You try to avoid anything connected with the, a traumatic experience. So for midwives, this could be like they try to avoid to work in the uh, birthing room where they witnessed a traumatic event, or they try to avoid a, a colleague who, who, who was part of it, or a um, obstetrician. Um, and the extreme example of avoidance is, of course, you avoid being a midwife altogether. And that's the extreme. Or before that, maybe you just move to postnatal care or to antenatal care. So you tr just try to avoid um, the birth setting because birth itself can be, of course, a reminder if you have uh, post-traumatic stress due to witnessing traumatic birth events. Okay, and then there's arousal. This just gives you like um, stress, uh, increased heart rate, um, yeah, just symptoms of, of uh, stress and alertness where, again, you not, you can't choose, you have no control to stop that. When these symptoms kick in, you just kind of um, are a bit, um, you just have to deal with them. So that is the um, symptoms of what we call post-traumatic stress disorder. And, um, yeah, it will be called, um, in my research, um, probable post-traumatic stress, stress disorder. 
Okay. Okay, so what was um, good and interesting is that many midwives were really happy to participate in the survey. So I felt that many midwives really, um, uh, really uh, were, yeah, really um, appreciated being asked about this part of their midwifery practice. And that's also, I got received emails from midwives telling me that. And so there was a general kind of uh, appreciation of um, being asked about the topic of witnessing traumatic birth. So lots of respondents in a short time. Um, 601 got to fill out the whole survey, which was quite lengthy, was about 35 minutes. And in this group, the um, I had 17% of midwives um, scoring positive for what we defined as probable PTSD. <clears throat> so that's that is nothing really new. We we knew already. We have this research. We now midwives get distressed. Um, they experience when they witness trauma and they experience signs of traumatic uh, symptoms of traumatic stress. The number I found is 17 percent, if at all, is less than what has been found in studies in the U.S. and in the U.K. Um, and this is because I had my criteria quite tight, and the PSSSR gives rather um, and the cutoff I chose, so it gave a rather conservative estimate. Of course, you can now look and say, okay, there's lots of people also who don't have the full, who don't meet the criteria to uh, have this probable PTSD diagnosis, but they still have symptoms of post-traumatic stress. So that would be another whole group um, of midwives. So, but anyway, 17%, it's still quite a high percentage. Um, of midwives, almost one fifth, have have these symptoms to the extent that they meet the criteria for probable PTSD. So, okay, we knew we knew this. Many midwives suffer from that. But then it was interesting. I um, tested a model to see what what is it that makes it more likely for midwives to get that distress. Um, I approached it. So you see already on the slide, this is what I found. I'll just explain a bit how I how I got to um, investigate these specific um, these specific uh, variables. So I um, chose like what you call a um, socio a um, ecological model to um, look at it. So I look, okay, there must be individual reasons within the individual midwife, there must be professional reasons in the professional environment that make it more or less likely to get these post-traumatic stress symptoms. And there must be factors that have to do with birth culture and with um, the way we, we manage birth. So I investigated these, these layers. And um, also, of course, I looked, what, what do we know? What does the literature tell us in other populations? What makes, what are risk factors for PTSD in other populations, so on. So, so I, I collected these variables, and then, um, yeah, these three variables that you see here on my slide: the um, emotional reactions, the first two, the peritraumatic. As a peritraumatic, this means during the tr trauma that you had during or shortly after. Um, midwives showed a reaction of horror, and they also showed. Um, a reaction or the headstrong feelings of guilt that were the, the strongest predictors. So that means these midwives who had those, they, they were much more likely than to be part of those 17% who had the um, diagnosis of probable PTSD. And the last predictor that was significant in my model was a personal traumatic experience when giving birth. So when, when midwives um, rated um, their own birth experience when they gave birth to a own child as traumatic, then they also had a double risk for probable PTSD. Um, the other factor that also showed in the model, but it was not, was just significant, was um, workplace decision authority. 
maybe somebody was there last year. I talked about that uh, specific um, aspect uh, last year. So that was about professional t autonomy. So that did show in my model too, but it just was not highly significant. It just was like on the edge of just being significant, but it played too. So the more professional, professional autonomy midwives had, um, the less likely they were to develop uh, post-traumatic stress symptoms or the other way around, the more, the less they, they were able to have a say what happened at their workplace, work independently, the more likely they were to actually have symptoms of post-traumatic stress after witnessing trauma. And um, yeah, so these three factors, you see there, they double the risk. That's were the main findings of my study. And um, of course, just going back one step, I asked all the midwives, have you ever witnessed traumatic birth and what sort of traumatic birth have you witnessed? And of course, all midwives who participated in my survey have witnessed traumatic birth events. So that was a, um, yeah, that that was, um, that happened to, to all of them. Yeah, okay. So yeah, that were the main findings. Um, I here you see another time the um, the table, and where you see down there you have the um, um, empathic concern and personal distress. So, so that were like empathy measures. They also were um, <clears throat> they also were um, just um, they also showed up in the model as significant and also what you call psychological demand. So, but yeah, these, um, the adjusted odds ratio were the strongest for horror, guilt, and a personal traumatic experience when giving birth. So, of course, there's this, uh, these are interesting findings and um, we need to, of course, think what what does it mean now? What, um, how can these findings impact how we address post-traumatic stress in midwives? What can we do? And I did put in the implications here as a first line that we still need recognition uh, that um, post-traumatic stress is something that happens to midwives. And I feel we're moving towards that. There's much more talk about birth trauma and that it also affects midwives. So I see I see, and when I talk to colleagues, um, I, I perceive there is a change in perception in that. And um, the second step, or my second big, 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 big implication, is that we need, in general, um, like a culture of what is called trauma-informed care and practice. And here, this is the point that um, brings together again what I said in the beginning: that women and midwives are in this topic together. So um, midwives are affected, but women are affected. And if midwives don't deliver sensitive care, trauma affects women even worse. So we need, therefore, we need like a bigger approach, like a system approach that not just looks at how can we help the individual midwife to deal with her symptoms, but we need to look at how do we make our birth culture, how do we change our birth culture so that we have a lower incidence of traumatic birth. So we have less traumatic birth in the first place. Because if we have less traumatic birth, we have less midwives witnessing traumatic birth, and then we will have less post-traumatic stress. So that's very, um, very clear. And of course, then we also have less women experiencing traumatic birth, which is would be, you know, a really, really important outcome if we look at all the effects that experiencing birth trauma can have on women in the postpartum time and also beyond that time. So yeah, I would like really to um, to see also to place my research like as a part of the big puzzle of trauma, birth trauma, and to say, okay, we midwives, we are part of this, but the solution needs to be a bigger approach. It needs to be a system approach. And when we change, when we address post-traumatic stress in midwives, we automatically address also birth trauma in women. And that is totally what um, we should do because, yeah, by the definition of our profession, we are, women and midwives are connected. 
So yeah, that's I think that's my last slide too. So that's good final words. Yeah, these are the references. So that's my presentation. It's always funny you talk and I Julia, you did a marvellous job. Thank you very much. On behalf of all the audience, thank you very much. I'm sure we're all clapping for you. Thank you. Um, so, audience, uh, questions, please, for, uh, for Julia. If you'd like to raise your hand, either in the... left hand sidebar or write your questions in the right hand chat box we can feed those to julia and she can answer your questions while people are thinking about that uh, julia a question that came to my mind was um how does this compare with other countries you were specifically looking at australia uh, does does the does the results compare to other countries and I don't, is, you don't hear anything Australia back, so I hope it was all clear. Way. And please ask me questions if, if um, there are some. Mm. Uh, Australia now um, the numbers are lower than what uh, has what Beck have uh, found in the US and also what uh, compared to what Sheen and Spivey found in the UK, but that has to do with the way of measuring it. So, you know, that's like this whole area of how do you measure post-traumatic stress? And so Thank comparatively, you. you know, I had 17% uh, I think back, audience, if you have they questions, had 35% please type your and if, the right I'm not sure if I remember 100% right, but Sheen, I think they had uh, over what did, what will you do next 23% with this, uh, uh, of post-traumatic stress. So it is, Julia. if you compare you all next? these results, so if you say what what happens with Australian midwives, it looks first like it's not more than other countries, but also I I used a very conservative measure. So that's you know, um, if we would all use the same measure, we, I would suppose we probably had similarish results. But then again, you know, there is risk factors, and um, yeah, so that's that's what 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 it was also about to find out is there things that could maybe change change midwives' risks. Yeah. Well, I would like to um, develop an intervention for midwives um, to see uh, how can you, like, firstly, yeah, I, I would like to take that step back and look at general at trauma awareness in, in our culture, in our birthing culture. And this would be one thing I'd like to create trauma awareness. I think if midwives before we go on and look at the specific, you know, how can we reduce stress in midwives, it's good to take this big step and say, how can we um, 
make everybody trauma aware? How can we see that everybody realizes that um, birth has the potential to traumatize? Most of that is like re-traumatized because many people just go into birth, like many women go into birth and have already they have already had some traumatic experiences uh, in their uh, life Alyssa before getting pregnant or, you know, here before entering their birthing people, situation. Uh, and because of the nature of birth, that, like um, the intimate nature and the physical nature and all of that, birth is just a very an event so that is very um uh, uh, Ava has, Ava has a question. Very, yes, um, asking, do you have any recommendations that birth for midwives who are re traumatizes people who have had uh, traumatic experience, particularly like sexual trauma or trauma related to experiences of interpersonal violence? So uh, that's something where I feel like we should just um, aim for a trauma sensitiveness in our birthing culture. So that would be something I'm, I'd be working on, like an intervention. Yeah to do to increase that okay yeah Well, again, here my experience would be that it's important at the workplace, that at your workplace, that um, there is like room to talk about these experiences and to name them. I think what happens still a lot, also I said it's trauma uh, awareness is increasing. There's still like um, this normalizing, we're getting used that birth can, can really have this women experience is as traumatic and everybody is a bit horrified and you know, there's feelings of guilt. It's just has become something so normal. So I think the first step is really to realize what is happening here. Is this, why am I feeling so weird or so off after this birth experience or after a shift or in general? So just really to um, to learn about this language of trauma to, to accept, okay, birth is a subject where trauma is close. So there's this really healing potential of birth and there's the traumatic potential of birth. So that there needs to be an acceptance of that, which will then create a platform to talk about these experiences. And then I think that will already, you know, be good that midwives are clearly able to identify this this is I'm having symptoms of traumatic stress. I feel I want to avoid um, the situation. I feel stressed and aroused. I'm re-experiencing re -experiencing this situation. So then you can give it a name, to, give a name to your distress. And then I think it's important to do more research and find out what is. So my research pointed, you know, there was a bit of a tiny bit of evidence, which, as I said, did not quite turn out to make it in my model. But other, you know, other statistics I did did show actually that there is a relationship between how much professional autonomy midwives have and how uh, uh, they experience uh, trauma. So the more uh, uh, professional the autonomy they have, yeah, I measured it that as decision you know authority in like the job content questionnaire. Um, just for, we want to look at some of this professional autonomy. These midwives fared in general a bit better. And I think because they were able to manage birth in a way that in a way, allowed less for traumatic experiences to occur. So that would be one one way at looking at. So see, maybe how is our professional autonomy at that workplace? Could would that help us maybe to avoid traumatic birth situation or to deal with them better if we could um, have more professional autonomy? That's I find that very important. Yeah. Hmm. See that. Hmm. Like a, um, I think there are in the, I would have to, I think that there is um, colleagues looking at uh, the same topic in the UK. Um, 
but I'm not aware that there's no a chat, a chat right. room. But so there's another um, question has come up here. Um, yeah, no, I'm not aware. That's like a trauma um, chat room. Maybe that would be, uh, you know, detail, not sure if that, you would have to have a really good moderator uh, because it can also be, you know, disturbing to read a lot of traumatic of accounts people. from other people, people and not to, you know, that, that can also affect you, you know. <laughs> like negatively affect you. So there could be an aspect of sharing that's good we exchange, but there could also be like a disturbing aspect to this. Everybody, you know, describing really, really, you know, we experience very extreme situations as midwives and to get this unfiltered. So I think we have to be find a very uh, mindful and good way of discussing these experiences, a constructive way. Yeah. <clears throat> Hmm. Okay, so thanks, Elisa, for that question. Um, I did actually, so, so my survey had some, had, had some open-ended questions too. And in one of these open-ended questions, I did also ask midwives, um, what was the most traumatic thing? Or what was like, you talk about hotspots, but what was the hotspot of your traumatic experience? Because again, in, when we look at research with women during birth, um, Ayers and Harris, um, Harris and Ayers have done some research and they say, okay, for women, for example, the relationship with their caregiver during birth, that's a hotspot. So that's something, if this relationship, if there is like, that doesn't go well, they very likely can perceive that as traumatic, as being uh, neglected and so on. So that's a hotspot for women. Um, for midwives, I did ask this, I did ask that in an open-ended question, and I have not, I, I have not gotten around to do this. It's a Thank big, you, you know, uh, midwives wrote a I'm lot in this section. Time, so, so there's a couple more questions. They are very, you know, there is a lot happening. I have not done a, a uh, we'll conclusive see, analysis. We'll see I just read some of the answers. In the text what I can while, say while people are thinking on that, is that to another witnessing about the impact what, of workplace you know, like, bullying. Like short analysis and witnessing and severity um, of intervention rates in trauma that had to do with um, actions of other um obstetric personnel Sorry, like a, uh, of, of obstetricians or other midwives yeah. so um witnessing so obstetric work, violence principle. that that was something that got to midwives very very much and that they find very hard to um to deal with is that clear does it is that, is that answering your question Where, um, hang on, I'm just trying to find, but, ah, uh, yeah, okay. My work was play. Yeah, yeah, I'm just seeing that. Yeah, well, I, I would say, you know, um, to tell me that um, we know that um, social support can really be a protective factor for people experiencing post-traumatic stress or severe post-traumatic stress. So um, if you have bullying at a workplace, you have decreased social support. So I did not investigate that variable in my Very research, but you. that is well known um, from all other PTSD uh, research moment, that uh, social support Julia, protects you, you, people you have a poll. from will you, will you uh, getting long-term symptoms. Uh, so again, here it's important. Everybody might have symptoms of avoidance, arousal, and uh, re-experiencing re after witnessing a traumatic birth. Important is do they come back? Uh, do, uh, sorry, do they yeah do they come back or do they remain over time after four weeks? Do you still have these symptoms? And for those people who have support, um, that's less likely, okay. and that's that's very established so, in the PTSD research. So I'd say days. bullying, yeah, so we'll, the combination we'll of one bullying one with a workplace yeah. where there's lots of trauma is a very bad combination for midwives' mental health.
Yes, very quickly. So you see in the poll, I'm just um, asking basically of, uh, I would like to ask the participants of if they have ever, you know, how these findings resonate or if they've ever um, thought about about what they experience in these terms. So I'd like to maybe quickly put it up just for four questions. I see there's another question from uh, Michaela. Um, if I've Yeah, okay, so did I find any uh, links to the model of care? No, so I did it in Australia, and in Australia you'd, um, you have uh, public hospitals, and then you have um, private hospitals, and you have a just developing workforce of midwives who is providing like uh, independent midwifery care, and they have like continuous uh, care models and so on. So I, I um, distinguish these groups and um, I think that's just because it was not so many. It could, the statistics did not give it that you say um, it's significant that those midwives who work in um, work as independent midwife that they have less traumatic stress. And what is interesting here too, is because it's only a recent development in Australia, what you can also assume is that midwives, all midwives have previously worked in hospital okay, because Michaela there was no independent midwifery or, you know, the time, another majority. question. Very interesting question and maybe Lindsay, one reason that, that motivated them to change into independent practice was that they had that? traumatic stress and, you know, that they had re-experiencing. That's my theory, you know, that that's a big thing for midwives to move away from birthing. They just don't know it or don't name it, but they want to get out of there and they do something else then, which f for some might be independent practice or working somewhere else, at least temporarily, and maybe come back or maybe not come back. So it has to do um, a lot with retention too. Does that make sense to you, Michaela? And I think uh, very much related to that is then the question here of the comment from Joy Theatre. Yeah, same thing. I would answer, Lindsay, that it's really important because I'm working a lot with students on that topic too. And I think first thing is to give them concepts, to make them realize, okay, what is a traumatic birth? To give them an idea how often we see that and that there's different types of trauma. That's, I find, a really important concept to give them, to say there is what we call uh, interpersonal trauma that has to do with other humans doing something and then there's non-interpersonal trauma so that's like a you know an earthquake or something so if you look at the birth situation you have to say okay we have interpersonal trauma that has to do with what the relationship and what people do and how the interaction is but then you also have these obstetric emergencies but those are very few so the vast majority of traumatic events has to do with interaction and is interpersonal, you know, and that then has to do with um, women also, you know, some women re-experiencing previous trauma. So they get re-traumatized because we have a lot of women who have suffered from sexual abuse and then, you know, um, and I think, go yeah, in a joy. situation without maybe even ever, you know, having disclosed that. So for the students, I think 
first step two, exactly. just to give Jordan's them information be next, uh, so that they're not land in this confused so we'll, state, like, oh my God, this is a lot of intense uh, feelings. Doing our last, I don't know really what's going on. So give them some language, some concepts, so, uh, some statistics. I think then, and then, um, uh, and then self-care, so like, you know, mindfulness, so I think what I how might to do be to still empathetic with the women, but not um, kind of, you, have any last you know, lose yourself. There, Julia, so that's the skill of midwifery. I think that's what we need to teach, you know, in the whole course of a three-year midwifery degree. Yeah, and see it as... Fabulous. Well, on behalf of everybody, thank you very much indeed uh, for your presentation, Julia. We're all clapping here uh, in it silently, um, <laughs> but uh, thank you very much indeed. Uh, we're going to we're going to switch off the recording now, um, and thank you very much to Sarah for running the poll and uh, handling the background things. Much appreciated. Um, we're very interested to our audience. If you have any photographs of yourselves, or if you could take some photographs of yourselves sitting wherever you might be and however you might be uh, attending this uh, workshop, we'd be interested to see how and where you are.